All right, we're going to continue on talking about continuity. This is one of my favorite um, sections because um, I think the mathematical definition I think is is interesting and um, and it forces you to really rely on the mathematical definition, the axioms, the um, to to answer some of the questions. All right, so in this video, I want to distinguish between continuous on an interval and a continuous function. Okay, so continuous on an interval is probably what you think of when you think of discontinuities in general. So we, we hopefully you watched the video before this, which is talks about um, the three prong test for continuity. And in that graph that I showed in that video, we would say that that function is discontinuous on the interval from zero to four. It's discontinuous on that interval because there are discontinuities on the interval. All right, so that is usually the 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 standard understanding of continuity that students have. When we talk about what is a continuous function, whether a function is a continuous function or not, we have a distinction. So before I define it or explain it, I guess it's sort of defined up there in the corner, but before I explain it, I want you to think about this function right here. This is y equals the square root of x. And I want you to just think to yourself, would you consider this a continuous function or not? Hopefully you thought about it. You probably thought, yeah, it is a continuous function um, because it's got a smooth uh, curve. There's no breaks in the curve as you, you know, it starts at zero, zero, and it goes on forever to the right. Um, now I want you to think about this function, y equals one over x. Is y equals one over x a continuous function? What do you think about that? Think about it for a second, get your answer in your head. A lot of students will say, no, one over x is not a continuous function. And I will say, why? And they will say, well, because this point right here, x equals zero, there's a vertical asymptote there. There's a discontinuity. And so then I would ask, well, why would you even look at x equals zero? That seems like a strange place to look for a discontinuity. Um, and they will typically give me a puzzled look and I'll say, well, why didn't you check x equals negative two in this function when you were trying to decide if it was a continuous function or not? What is special about you know the interval over here to the right of the y-axis um, you know, you, you clearly looked for discontinuities over here to the left of the y-axis in this one. Why didn't you over here? And of course I let the confusion go on for a little bit, but the reason, uh, or what this all comes back to is the definition of a continuous function. And a continuous function is one that is continuous at every point in the domain of the function. Okay. So y equals square root of x is a continuous function because it's continuous at all points in the domain. What is the domain of this function? Well, it's it's all real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Um, so we, in interval notation, we'd write zero to infinity. That's your domain. And there are no discontinuities in the, um, in the domain. We look over here. What is the domain of one over x? Well, it is all numbers, all real numbers except for zero. So you, know, you could write that as negative infinity to zero, not including zero, then zero to infinity. That's the domain. It is continuous at every point in the domain. It's only when we look at x equals zero, which is not the domain, that we find a discontinuity. Okay, so one over x is a continuous function. And um, so just because it has a discontinuity somewhere on the x-axis does not make it a, discon uh, a discontinuous function. Right, so let's get rid of this. You're going to want to write that down. A continuous function is one that is continuous at all points in the domain. You don't have to abbreviate if you don't want to. Um, I'll also point out that that one over x is not continuous on the interval from negative one to one. So if I said, what about from negative one to one? Is one over x continuous there? You'd say, no, it's not. Because there's a difference between continuous on an interval and a continuous function in general, okay? Um, so I want to run through uh, a couple examples, but one thing I want to point out is that, um, and you may want to write this down or not, uh, but the sums, differences, products, quotients of continuous functions are also continuous. So we're going to rely on that in a second for some examples. And also the composites of continuous functions are also continuous. Okay. So Let's look at some examples and see, and we'll answer this question for all of them. Is f of x continuous 
Why or why not? All right, so let's start with tangent, f of x. So our example here, the f of x equals tangent of x. Okay, f of x equals tangent of x. Now, if you graph tangent, you will see that there are a bunch of asymptotes. And you might, your intuition before two minutes ago would have been that it's a discontinuous function because of all those asymptotes. It has an infinite number of discontinuities. But based on our definition, what I would ask you then is, at all of those asymptotes, are those values in the domain? And they're not, okay? So tangent is continuous at every point in its domain, so therefore it's continuous. Now, that's one way to approach this. Another way is to think of this as, well, tangent is actually the same as sine x over cosine of x. Now, for most students, there's no question about whether sine is a continuous function. It's just got the the wave that goes on forever in both directions. There's no breaks in the graph, so it's not even a question. Now, of course, sine is a continuous function. Its domain's all real numbers. It's continuous at all of them. Same for cosine. So then we could look at this and say, oh, well, tangent must be a continuous function because sine is continuous, cosine is continuous, and this is just the quotient of continuous functions. So therefore, tangent must be continuous. So this one is, yes, it is a continuous function. Okay, so a couple ways that you can think about that one. Um, let's see here. Erase this. Let's try another one. Here is one. Now you might have an idea in your head about what tangent looks like. You probably don't for this one. F of x equals sine of 4x squared minus 7x plus one. All right. Now, this one, you probably have no idea what this looks like in your in your head, but you don't need to because you can look at this as the parts of the function and reason to your conclusion in that way. So sine of x of sine of 4x squared minus 7x plus one, the inside part here is a quadratic. Well, we know that's a continuous function. The outside part is sine, which we know is a continuous function. And because this is the composite of continuous functions, it must also be continuous. We don't even need to know what the graph looks like. Okay, so that one is, yes, it is continuous. Okay, two more and then we'll call it good. What if I gave you this? Now, of course, you should try and answer these before, you should pause the video, try and answer them before I do, just to see how you do, to test your understanding. We'll take x cubed minus seven x minus six, divided by x squared minus 9. All right. Continuous function or not? Pause it. Make a hypothesis. You can graph it if you want. Okay. This function does have discontinuities in it. Those discontinuities occur at places that are not in the domain. When you graph this, you will see that there are vertical asymptotes at x equals three and negative three, there are vertical asymptotes there. I don't remember exactly what happens in the middle. Uh, it might be something like this, um, maybe. It doesn't really matter. I might have those wrong. But the point is that the discontinuities that occur over the real numbers don't occur in the domain. So this is still a continuous function. And again, you could think of it in terms of um, the properties of, uh, of limits also apply to the, of, um, continuous functions. That is that the sum, difference, quotient, product of continuous functions also continuous. This is the different or the quotient of a cubic and a quadratic. Therefore, it must be continuous. You are probably thinking, is it possible to have a discontinuous function? Because, Mr. Cresswell, you said that every function that is continuous in the domain is a continuous function. Is it possible to have a discontinuous function? The answer is absolutely it is. And what would be a great exercise for you is to think on that for a minute and see if you can come up with a function that is continuous, that is, um, that is discontinuous at a point inside the domain. So pause it and see if you can think about that for a second. Maybe even just sketch it and think about what that might look like. Okay. All right, here I'm going to give you one example of a discontinuous function, kind of the, the classic case. 
right? So y equals the greatest integer function. Int of x is how we write that. Now the greatest integer function is this one. Sort of fun to analyze in chapter, the chapter on limits here. Um, the greatest integer function is the step function. Okay, so it starts off at 0, 0, and continues on until you get to 1. And at 1, there's an open dot, and it jumps up to being 1. Okay, so, and then it continues, and it, then it jumps. And that's what the greatest integer function is. In fact, let's use function notation. Okay, so for example, f of 1.2 is equal to 1. Okay, so f of 1.2 is 1. f of 2, then, jumps to 2. Jumps up to Oh, I missed a thing here. Sorry, a little bit too high. There we go. Okay, so f of two jumps to two. So then the question is, are there discontinuities? Yes, there are. There's a bunch of jump discontinuities here. Um, are those discontinuities occurring in the domain? Because remember tangent. Tangent had a bunch of discontinuities, but they were all at places that were not in the domain. For this question, the answer is yes, they are in the domain. Greatest integer function has a domain of all real numbers, okay? No matter what you plug in to the greatest integer function, there will be an output. Are there discontinuities then? Yes, there are. At every integer, there's a discontinuity. So this is a function with domain all reals, discontinuities at every integer. So discontinuities happening inside of the domain. Therefore, this is a discontinuous function. Sorry for the poor penmanship. This is a discontinuous function. All right. Um, you can get other ones that typically are piecewise defined functions or the other ways that you can come up with a discontinuous function. But I like this section because it relies on a couple things. It relies on your understanding of domain. So you've got to make sure for calculus as we go forward, you have a good grasp on how to find the domain of a function. And then it relies on this, this definition of a continuous function, which... Um, leads to some counterintuitive um, results or answers for some of these questions. So that's what we mean by continuous function, and that wraps up section uh, three, so continuity.